Are you ready to see over 40 DIY home decor ideas for fall? I'm gonna show you everything from a tablescape to a foyer decor, even a fall beverage station. I'm excited to show you, so let's get started. The first thing that I like to do when I'm setting my tables is to just simply move the chairs back. It gives you so much easier access to your table and I don't know how many times I've been reaching over and scraped up my arm. So we're gonna move the chairs back so we have easy access to the table. And so we cut down on armpit scrapes. I'm gonna use a neutral tablecloth. Now I like using neutral tablecloths because they act as a great backdrop to all of the other vibrant colors and textures that you're gonna use. So using just a plain solid colored tablecloth is a great option. I'm going to assemble my centerpiece first. The reason why I do this is because I don't want to do it after I have my table settings in place because then I might accidentally knock over a glass or bump my table setting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this beautiful amber table runner down first. This lace is so pretty and I got it from Hobby Lobby. And then on top of this lace runner, I'm going to add this riser. Now I made this riser. It was a really easy DIY and I love using risers in my designs because it helps to elevate and give height variation to your designs. And then it also really helps your pieces that you want as a focal point to really stand out. Next, I'm going to add this fall garland. Now I got this at Michael's last year and it's the perfect size to go down the center of my table. However, I am going to embellish it a little bit. I'm going to add these cute little amber mini lights. I got these from Tuesday morning. So I'm just going to wrap those around my garland and then I'm going to make it a little bit fuller by adding a few extra floral picks and some leaves. Next, I'm going to add my apothecary jars to my riser. Now, I love using apothecary jars. They're just a great classic piece that can transition from season to season and different holidays because all you need to do is switch out the contents that's inside. For instance, I'm adding these beautiful wood acorns and these leaves inside of this, and that's just a simple and easy way to theme a design. I love the warmth and glow that candles provide while you're dining. So I'm going to add these beautiful mercury glass candle votive holders and I'm going to scatter them throughout the runner. So what I'm going to do when I'm done with that is I'm going to fill them up with water and then I'm going to add in a floating candle. Candlelight is an affordable and simple way to add elegance to your table setting. I love the soft glow candles provide to a tablescape. The luminous light can take a plain dining table and transform it into a beautiful cozy dining experience. Even though I already have a tablecloth, I want to add another layer by adding these gold geometric placemats. They'll just add extra texture and shine with the gold. And then on top of the placemats, I'm going to add these chargers that have this beautiful wood grain, which is perfect for this fall tablescape. And then on top of my charger, I'm going to add this white plate with the silver rim. Having just a white clean plate is a great backdrop a neutral zone for your table setting to add all kinds of other things to it. Instead of a salad plate, I'm going to use these wood sliced coasters. I got a set of four for $5.99 at Home Goods, And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it right in the center of my place setting. And then on top of this, I'm going to add a baking cup. I also got these at Home Goods, and they are so cute. They've got a little pumpkin on it and this one has some stripes and I'm going to fill them up with some nuts. So my guests have something to snack on while they're waiting for dinner. These cloth napkins are definitely the most vibrant part of my tablescape. I wanted to do one really saturated pop of color and this is perfect because it has those beautiful warm autumn tones. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide it through this beautiful gold napkin ring and I have so much gold on my table it's a perfect complement to this napkin. And then also I wanted to do some place settings. I feel like going to a dinner party and having an assigned seat is kind of a classy and elegant way to dine. So what I did was I made these beautiful place cards and I just printed off some leaves on my computer and I put everybody's name in the center. And then I just slid it right on to this cute little place card holder. Mm -hmm. 
Another way I'm going to bring in that autumn feeling is with these light olive colored stemware. Now, if you can believe it, I got these at the Dollar Tree. It just goes to show that you don't have to spend a lot of money to get an expensive and classy look. You can create a gorgeous seasonal table while on a budget. Thrift stores, garage sales, and the Dollar Tree have beautiful items at affordable prices. Fall is such a warm and inviting time of year. It's a perfect time to decorate with amber tones, muted greens, and gold. Fall entertaining can be easy if you have the right inspiration. From jars filled with acorns and leaves to a personalized individual place setting. Hopefully you've been inspired to cozy up in your own way for fall. To say that we love Halloween is an understatement. We decorate our home every single year. We do spider themed coffee tables. We do spider themed food. We do witch centerpieces. So to match what's going on on the inside, we're gonna do some fun things on the exterior of our home and we're gonna decorate our front porch. We're gonna do some laundry baskets full of skeletons. We're gonna do some spider web wreaths and we're gonna do a ghost with someone that might surprise you lurking underneath. I'll give you a hint, they have ice in their veins. To start off decorating my front porch, I'm gonna use some skeletons that have been in gel far too long. Now to make my gel, I used some laundry baskets that I got from the Dollar Tree. I also used some smaller baskets that had handles on it. They were also from the Dollar Tree. And the only problem was the color. The laundry baskets were white and the smaller basket was green. So what I did was I spray painted a few coats of black paint on the baskets and it turned it a beautiful shade of black and it's perfect now to put my skeletons inside. Once the paint on my basket is dry, it's time to add my prisoners. Now I got these little skeletons from the Dollar Tree. I picked up four of them and I added three to the large basket and this last skeleton gets some time in solitary. So I'm gonna put him in the smaller basket. I'm gonna close it up and I'm going to secure it together with some electrical tape. Now this is a great option because it's a little more elastic, so you can easily put it through both of the baskets and it will tie it tightly together. And then also it's black, so it will blend in with the black paint that we used and you won't be able to see what's holding everything together. I'm also gonna be using the black electrical tape to attach my chains to my basket. Again, these are from the Dollar Tree and they don't weigh very much, they're just plastic. And so the tape is perfect and the tape alone will be able to hold and attach the chains to the basket. I'm gonna hang my gel skeletons on this tall iron plant holder. Now what I did was I took a curtain rod and I put it across the top and again, I use that electrical tape to secure it together and I'm gonna put the basket on either side. But before I do that, I'm gonna put in some cream gauze. I'm just gonna drape it over the top and then I'm gonna add these cute little spiders. The cream gauze will break up all of this black because there's so much black. It'll add a little more brightness to it and a little more interest and excitement. In the center of my display, I'm adding this chalkboard tombstone it's just another fun way to add a whimsical touch to this display. You can easily take regular household items and transform them into ominous Halloween decorations. This is an affordable and creative way to house creepy skeletons emerging from behind the bars. Front door decorations are one of my favorite ways to decorate my porch. There are so many ways you can do it. You can use wreaths like I did. You can use some signs or some spiders, and these wreaths couldn't have been any easier. I got these spider web forms at the Dollar Tree, and they were the perfect size. I also decided to make some bows to embellish it a little bit because it was pretty plain. So what I did was I got some of this spider ribbon. It was also from the Dollar Tree and some coordinating stripe ribbon. And then I added some cute little ornaments. Now these ornaments are black and sparkly and they have spiders on it. And all I did was I took some black and white twine and I attached it through the ornament hook and I 
put it onto my wreath. I just tied a knot and I did it at various heights so it gave a little more interest so it wasn't just straight across and I think it turned out beautifully. If you haven't guessed by now who our mystery guest under the sheet is, it is Frosty the Snowman. Now Frosty has been in our family for years and he lights up our front porch every year for Christmas, but this year he's gonna join us for Halloween and he's gonna get a costume. I'm going to drape Frosty in a black sheet. Now this is an old black sheet and we certainly don't use it for bedding anymore. If you don't have an old sheet, you can use a tablecloth a plastic tablecloth from the Dollar Tree is an affordable option and they come in black and white so if you wanted a white ghost you could use that too. Now that Frosty is all covered up we're going to embellish him. We're going to give him some googly eyes, we're going to give him a trick-or-treat bucket to hold, we're going to put some spider webs and some spiders on him, we're also going to give him a sign to hold, a beware sign to warn trick-or-treaters what is coming. I'm going to attach these googly eyes that I got at the Dollar Tree to Frosty the Ghost and I'm going to do it using these safety pins instead of tape because if I use tape it's so humid here that it would be off in five minutes so securing it with safety pins is the best way to do it. I simply poked the safety pin through the back side of the eyes and then attached it onto my sheet. One of the best parts about our ghost is that it lights up, so it will glow at night and provide a beautiful, warm Halloween ambiance. Also, this was so affordable because it was something that I already had and I just reused it in a new and fresh way. Welcome your guests this fall season with a spectacular Halloween porch. From caged skeletons to a recycled ghost, you can set the mood with more than just a jack-o'-lantern. Hopefully these Halloween porch ideas gave you some inspiration to make your porch the best Halloween porch on the block. Now my front porch is ready for Halloween. I am so happy with the way it turned out. It's cute and scary all at the same time. And every time I look at all these little inhabitants, it just makes me... Now, I love decorating my home for the fall. Usually I decorate with beautiful pumpkins or a lovely tablescape or a beautiful wreath, but today we're gonna go in a lighthearted direction and I'm gonna show you how to make these cute little fall gnomes. This foam form is the perfect size and shape for our gnome. Now, I got this at the Dollar Tree. It was in the floral section. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover it up because I don't want any of this white part to show through. So I'm gonna use some burlap. And what I did is I just cut it to the size and the shape that I needed to cover up my foam. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hot glue this burlap onto the foam and then it will be nice and covered. Now it's time to make the beard for our gnome. Now there are a lot of options when it comes to making beards. You could use some faux fur, you could use some yarn, you could use some strips of material and just cut them up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a mop from the Dollar Tree. And all I'm gonna do is just twist the pole off the end of the mop and I'm left with this shaggy little part that's gonna be perfect for my beard. Now I'm gonna add the beard on top of my cone. Now this mop is so convenient, it's got this plastic thing at the top. It's almost like a hat. So you can just turn it over and you can see that it divides it really nicely. And I'm going to put some glue right in the center and then I'm going to place it right on top of my cone and then I'm gonna fluff up my little strands so I have a great beard for my gnome. To make my hat, I'm going to use some dishcloths. Now I got this set of three dishcloths at Burlington for $6.99. And I'm only gonna end up using these two for the hats. So not only do I get hats, but I get a bonus dishcloth. 
There are a lot of options when it comes to fabric for your hats. You can of course just use regular material. You could use a tablecloth or a placemat or even an old flannel shirt would be a fantastic option to make your hat. To make a pattern for my hat, I'm just gonna use some regular old white copy paper. Now what I did was I folded the paper in half and I just cut out a triangle to get my form. Now this is an easy and cheap way to make a pattern and all I'm gonna do is fold my material in half. I'm going to pin my form on the top of the material and then I can cut around it and then I will get two identical triangles. Now I'm going to sew these together and it is going to be like the easiest project ever because there's already a hem on the bottom so I'm literally just sewing up each side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them together so that the seam is on the outside. So when I sew it and then eventually flip it over, the finished edge will be on the outside. Now if you don't have a sewing machine, you can hand stitch this together or you could even use hot glue. I pinned the two triangle pieces together and then sewed a straight line right along the edge of the entire length of the triangle. Now that I'm at the top of the hat, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna cut a piece of twine and I'm gonna sew that to the top because what I wanna do is I wanna have this hanging from the top of the hat and I'm gonna put a little embellishment on there just to add some extra interest but also to weigh the hat down so it's floppy. I sewed in my three inch piece of twine at the top and then continued sewing a straight line on the other side of the triangle. Now that my hat is done, I'm gonna flip it inside out so we've got a nice finished edge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a chopstick. I'm gonna stick the chopstick inside and it's going to be able to flip it around really nicely. And then it will also be able to poke it through the top so the top is nice and pointy. And then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna fill it with some shredded paper. Now, this is great. I love using this stuff because you can form it really easily. However, if you don't have shredded paper, you could use some cotton balls or cotton batting and that would work great too. Okay, now I'm gonna pop my little hat on top of my gnome. Just gonna pull it on really snug. And then what I'm gonna do is once my hat is on, I can figure out where I wanna put my nose. Now my nose is a grape. I loved the color of it. It's just from a floral pick and I just pulled it off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck it right up inside, right underneath the hat and I'm gonna hot glue it to the foam. And that way it is secured to the foam and then I can tuck my little hat right over the top of the nose. Now it's time to embellish our little gnome. And because it's fall, I'm gonna use some fall inspired embellishments. I got these little wooden pumpkins and leaves at the Dollar Tree, they're just stickers. So I'm just gonna peel off the back and then I can add it right onto my twine. I'm gonna add one on one side and one on the other. That way it's heavier and it'll weigh it down. And then I'm also gonna use some ribbon. I'm gonna tie some ribbon around the brim of the hat. I'm gonna hot glue it on and then I'm going to add another pumpkin in the center and it's gonna look fantastic. Now it's time to style the beards. Now, I wanted to do it to look like a Viking. I don't know why. I don't know if it's Viking season in the fall. I'm not sure, I guess it is today. But I did some braids on this guy and over here I'm gonna do it into like some little bubbles, I guess you would call it, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna make some little ties, two of them. And I think adding some extra little embellishments and some detail makes your piece one of a kind and unique. Using the same twine, I tied two knots on each side of the nose. Then I puffed them up slightly so I got some rounded bubbles of beard. Now our autumn gnomes are finished and ready to be put on display. I'm adding my striped hat gnome to the top of a tiered tray and the checked hat gnome to the side. And of course, we need a reminder that there's no place like gnome. I'm also adding a few stems of fall leaves and a couple of suede pumpkins. And finally, I'll finish the look off with some pine cone acorns. Now I've got everything styled from my sign to my pumpkins and my leaves. Everything just looks like fall. I'm so excited to have these little gnomes. They make me smile every time I look at them. I can't walk past without breaking out into a little giggle. 
And they're a fun little piece because it's kind of non-traditional. You don't see these very often in fall decorating. So having non-traditional pieces are a fun way to bring in a little creativity and whimsy into your decor. These adorable autumn gnomes were so easy and affordable to create. This whimsical duo will definitely bring a smile to everyone who sees them. Today we're gonna to be transforming our foyer from a coastal beach themed setting to a fall harvest welcoming foyer. It's time to say goodbye to summer and hello to fall. So I'm going to clear away my coastal inspired decor so I can start with a blank slate to transition my foyer into a cozy, warm and inviting space. The first thing we're going to do is hang up our sign. I got this sign from Michaels and it was just a plain wooden sign and what I did was I added the little chalkboards on it and then I can write whatever message that I want. In this case it's autumn and I'm going to hang up this sign first because if I don't hang up the sign first and I do it later, there is a possibility that I could knock some of the decor off of my table and that would make me very sad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on up first and then it will be out of the way and set and ready to go. I'm gonna hang up my sign with these suction cups. I got these at the Dollar Tree and these are so convenient to use. All you have to do is just attach it to my mirror in this case. And it's really nice because then I don't have to worry about nailing any holes into the walls or putting some tape on it that could possibly take off some paint later on and then these just come right off when you're done with your signs or your decor. I got a package of these crystal balls and these fall leaves at Tuesday morning. They are such a perfect touch for my banner and then I'm also going to use them on my candlesticks. They just bring in a little bit of extra sparkle and all I did was I added them to a fishing line. That way they just kind of dangle and you can't really see what's holding them all together. And so it just looks like a bunch of fall leaves and crystals hanging down. The first thing that I'm going to add to my table is this beautiful fall runner with these lovely shimmery leaves. There are so many options when it comes to table coverings for this harvest season. You could use some knitted blankets, you could use a piece of faux fur, some burlap, or even a thick, chunky scarf would be a beautiful runner. If you recognize the sign display stand, it's because I made it last week. And I made it with just things that I had around the house. Now this is a perfect way to display signs, and signs are such an easy way to bring in a theme because it just says it right on there. And they're affordable as well because the Dollar Tree has so many great options. So signs are a great way to decorate for fall. On the other end of my table, I'm going to be using these beautiful amber glass vases. I got these at Home Goods a few years ago. However, I'm not gonna be using them as a vase. I'm gonna be flipping them over and I'm gonna be using them as a candlestick because the bottom is flat. It's a perfect spot for me to put my candle right on top. Now if I were to leave my candlesticks just straight across, that's pretty boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of the candlesticks to the top of this box. Now adding the variation in height gives it a lot more interest and it makes it look much more unique. Now this is one chunk of a candle. So in order to kind of break up all of this cream colored wax, I'm going to use some ribbon. Now this ribbon is the same ribbon that I used in my display over here, so it will coordinate to this side as well. And then I also use these cute little gems that I used up in my sign. I wrapped the ribbon around the center of the candle and tied it into a tight knot. Next, I made my bows by looping, twisting, and looping again until I had three loops. Then I took a six inch piece of floral wire and wrapped it around my bow loops. Then I turned it over and twisted the wire tightly together to secure. Next, I tied my fishing line onto the ribbon around my candle. I attached two lines of crystals, one on either side of the knot. Finally, I slid the wire behind the ribbon on the candle and then twisted the wires together to securely attach my bow. The bows and crystals transform this boring cream candle into a beautiful decorative fall showstopper. 
Clearance is one of my all-time favorite words, and Target really knows how to clear out. Last fall, I got these pumpkins for 20 cents a piece, and these beautiful wood leaves, they were originally $3, I think I got them for like 50 cents, so I got a ton of them. Shopping off season is a great way to save money. Also, last week, I got this beautiful brass tray at Target, and it was also on clearance, and it was only $8.98. So when you're out shopping, don't skip the clearance aisle. I'm gonna place my beautiful brass tray in the center of my tablescape, and I'm gonna put it on top of this box. Now, the reason why I'm gonna raise it up a little bit is because I'm gonna put some little mini lights that I got at the Dollar Tree underneath, along with some fall leaves. Adding the lights bring in a warm ambiance to the decor, and the additional fall leaves that surround our brass tray add extra fullness, color, and interest to our autumn display. I'm gonna add this cake stand to my brass tray. Now, I love bringing in different colors and textures into my display. It's also gonna help with some extra height variation because I'm gonna place my pumpkins on top. I got this pumpkin and this pumpkin at Home Goods. And then I also got this pumpkin at Tuesday morning. They were all under $16 a piece, so it was pretty affordable. And I love using these mercury glass pumpkins because the glass is so beautiful. And it has this really gold iridescent shimmer that adds such a nice detail. Now that everything is in place, the finishing touch is just to add these cute little pumpkins and leaves. And then I'm gonna fill in any vacant spaces with some coordinating fall leaves. Now our tabletop decor is all set and ready for fall. I have a few final bits of advice for you. There are a few things that really help me when I'm designing a tablescape, and one of them is to make sure that you have groups of odd numbers, three, five, seven. They seem to be a little more natural that way. Also, I use a U shape. I have it up in my banner, and then my entire table is kind of like a U, and then my pumpkins are a U so they mimic each other. So using the same shapes is a really great way to design. And then the last bit of advice I have is to use the variations in heights because it just brings in so much more interest and it makes your piece unique and special. With Halloween quickly approaching, that means it's time to have a spooky Halloween dinner party. I'm gonna show you how to make a centerpiece out of sticks. We're gonna do some mini cauldron place cards filled with candy. I'm gonna show you how to put together a place setting with mismatch plates. It's gonna be so much fun and we're gonna end up with a spooky looking tablescape that was so easy to put together. Now I'm setting the Halloween scene with this tablecloth. It's got spiders and spider webs on it. It not only gives me the theme of spiders for my tablescape, but it also gives me a color scheme with the black and the white. And on the center, I'm going to add this gauze. This is gonna act as a runner. It's also gonna be a nice bright pop in the center of this table so that I can add my candles and my galvanized lanterns on top and they will really pop. Now I know that you are all so busy with all kinds of parties and events this time of year. So I'm gonna show you how to make a quick centerpiece that is very affordable. So what I did was I just scoured my neighborhood for some branches and for some sticks and I removed the leaves once I found the sticks that I wanted, and then I spread them out on a large piece of paper outside, and then I got some black spray paint. I sprayed a few coats of paint all over the branches, and then I let it dry completely. And I ended up with these great black creepy sticks. Now I'm gonna put my sticks inside of this galvanized lantern. I got this lantern at Target, in an after 4th of July clearance sale, it was 50% off, so it was only $2.50 was a bargain. I love bargains. The only problem is that it has this red band around the bottom, which isn't gonna fit in with my tablescape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this wrapping paper. It's black and white houndstooth, and it's gonna fit in with my tablescape. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut out a strip large enough that I can wrap it around the base of my lantern. And then in the center of that, I'm going to get an orange ribbon. Now the orange ribbon is gonna add an extra pop of color and a little more interest to my lantern. Now that my lantern is decorated, I'm gonna add in my sticks. I'm gonna spread them out evenly. And then on the ends of the branches, I'm gonna add these little ornaments that I have. They are so cute. I've got some bats and some skeletons and a little mummy. I got them at Home Goods. And then at the end of that, I'm going to add in a few little wispy spider webs, these little cotton spider webs. That's just gonna add an extra little eerie touch to my tree. I got this spider-like candle holder at Burlington. Now, it's gonna be the perfect base for my galvanized lantern. Not only is this gonna to contribute to the spider theme, but it's also going to give my centerpieces extra height and drama. Now it's time for my plate. Now I'm going to mix and match my table setting plates today. Number one, because I don't have enough of one kind and number two, because I like the way it looks. Now I have some round circular plates that I got from the Dollar Tree. I have four of those. And then I have these square plates that I got from Home Goods. They're orange and polka dot, they're so cute. And what's gonna tie them together is the color. The square ones have this black polka dot that ties in with the black plates. Also, another thing that's gonna tie them together are the salad plates. Everybody's gonna get one of these. These are just paper plates that I got at Target and I'm gonna set them in the center and it will tie everything together. I'm gonna to use these mini cauldrons as place card holders. Now I just filled them up with candy corn and with some York peppermint patties and then I made these little name tags. I just did it on my computer. I printed it out and I cut them up and I'm just gonna tuck them right inside. That way everybody knows where they're supposed to be sitting. I also got these napkins at Target. They are so cute. They say Happy Halloween. And I'm just gonna place these right underneath my cauldron. And again, it has that black and white theme, so it will just add to the whole feel of the tablescape. These silver vampire teeth are one of my favorite pieces of Halloween decor. I got them years ago at Home Goods, and they're actually a place card holder, but I'm gonna use them as a napkin ring today. I got these orange cloth napkins at JCPenney, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide it through my teeth, I'm gonna pull it through, and then I'm gonna fan out the top and the bottom, and they're gonna be a perfect little pop of color at each place setting. Instead of spending more money on glasses, I'm just gonna reuse ones that I already have. However, I'm going to theme them with these orange and black and white and black paper straws. By adding these straws, it gives your clear glasses a Halloween feel. The final step is just to fill in the center runner. Now, when I bought these spiders at the Dollar Tree, they were black but I gave them a light coating of gold to make them more custom. I'm just gonna scatter these throughout the runner. I also have these cute little cups and I'm going to add a candle inside, a floating candle, because what is a Halloween tablescape without candles? So in here, I'm gonna add some floating candles and then I also have these little pumpkin votive candle holders. I'm gonna light these up and the dim candlelight will add to the eerie feel of our Halloween tablescape. Now my Halloween table setting is set and ready for my guests. Halloween is such a fun time to have people over for a night of fun-filled fright. I hope you got some inspiration or some ideas so that you can put together a memorable Halloween tablescape. There are so many ways to put a fun twist on your Halloween table decor. If you're looking to throw a spooky and unique dinner party, try making a simple centerpiece out of sticks. Use a variety of colorful Halloween dishes and turn a cauldron full of candy into a place card holder. Happy fall, everyone. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create your own custom DIY fall garland for your fireplace mantle. I've got all my supplies out, so let's begin. Hi, 
I've already decorated my overmantel. I swapped out the painting that was there and I switched it for a more rustic wooden wall art that I found at Kirkland's. This arched wooden window frame has a natural aesthetic tailored for fall. The slats in the window panes are ideal for hanging my wreath. I embellished my wreath with greenery so it would coordinate with my garland. I threaded my copper ribbon through the center of my wreath, tied it to the top of my wall art, then centered it in the middle of the window frame. Now hung, it's the perfect inspiration piece for my fall mantelscape. If you're planning on decorating above your garland, I suggest doing that first. That way you don't knock it off accidentally or drop something on top of it. This wooden banner was only $3 from Target. I added mini chalkboard rectangles that started out as chalkboard floral picks. I removed the wooden dowel from the back and then glued them to the center of each of the wooden pieces of flag. Now I have a customizable banner that is interchangeable with various seasons, parties, and events. I am using command hooks to hang my garland. By folding my garland in half, I located the center of my garland and placed it securely around the command hook. Next, take your string of lights and wrap it around your garland. Again, fold your string of lights in half so you can find the middle and it will be even on both sides. I'm using battery operated lights, that way I don't have to deal with the excess electrical cords. Weave your lights evenly around your garland. This will prevent a big chunk of lights in one area and a sparse amount of lights in another. Next, I'm going to make my garland more substantial and colorful by adding copper and gold ribbon. I layered my ribbon on top of each other. My copper ribbon was wired. I trimmed my ribbon down a bit so that the wire was exposed. I weaved the wire through my gold netting and now I've created a custom ribbon. I secured my ribbon to the command hooks and then wound it loosely around my garland. Leave the ribbon billowy and slack at this point. It makes it easier to move and mold around the garland. Once it's even, you can pull it tighter and trim the ends. Start off with your larger pieces of greenery, spread them out evenly, and then go back with the smaller pieces and fill in the gaps. The focal points of my garland are at the center and each end of my fireplace mantle. I'll place my larger pieces in those areas and straighten them out so they're untangled and hang naturally. Weave and wrap your additional greenery into the garland. This will secure them and seamlessly integrate them into your garland. Another way to securely attach your added greenery is to bend your wire into a hook and then slide it into place. Along with dispersing the different greenery and fall elements evenly, it's also important to be aware that your colors are spread out consistently so your garland isn't broken up by a large group of one color. Our garland is finished and looks beautiful and professionally done. Now that you have the skills to make your own garland, you can get creative. Make a table runner, coordinating wreath, or decorate a banister. The same decorating concepts will work in a variety of different decorating ideas. For a touch of extra grandeur, I added a fall floral piece to each end of my mantle. The urns were also a DIY. I glued a ceramic vase to the top of a wooden candlestick. This addition enhanced my mantelscape by drawing the eye upward and providing extra balance and scale. I love the glow, warmth, and ambiance candles provide to any setting. For extra height, I flipped over some mercury glass candle votives and set the candles on top. These flicker flame battery operated candles are from Amazon. The final piece is a wooden wicker basket filled with down pillows and a soft luxury throw. These soothing items will keep you cozy and warm as you relax by the fire. My fireplace, hearth, mantle, and overmantle have never looked so warm and inviting. It's a show-stopping display that will demonstrate your amazing talents as a decorator. This harvest scene will delight and charm your friends and family as you entertain for Thanksgiving or other fall activities. The most important meal of the year is coming up. So to go along with this stunning meal, we're going to make a beautiful centerpiece. I'm going to show you how to do a garland. I'm going to put candles out. We're going to do some DIY sayings. And I'm going to show you how to turn a magnolia seed pod into a beautiful and natural element that will look beautiful in our Thanksgiving centerpiece. I'm going to start off with a runner. 
I have this long lace rectangular runner, which is perfect for my long rectangular table. I like to use runners because it gives me parameters and a border or a frame for all the decorative pieces that I'm going to put on top. I also like to do them a little more slender because then you'll have some room to put all of your plates and your other tableware and dishware around it. Also, it's nice to start off with a decorative base. On top of my lace runner, I'm going to add my DIY riser. It's amazing what adding a few inches can do to a centerpiece. I'm going to add a few pieces of my decor on top of this riser, and by elevating them, it really makes your overall centerpiece look a lot more custom and unique. I'm adding a garland to the center of my table. I love using garlands because they are long and slender, and they will really help to reinforce the long, slender centerpiece that I'm creating. I'm also going to add some little mini lights to it. I love the sparkle that the little lights add, so I'm just going to wrap those around the garland. And then I'm also going to wrap around the garland these little berry garlands that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now these were in the Christmas section. You don't always have to use Christmas things specifically for Christmas because it's gold. It's going to fit in perfectly with so many other seasons. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap this around the garland as well. It's going to add a nice sparkle and sheen. And then also when I'm done adding my lights and my garlands, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to add some more fall leaves and some picks to really beef up the garland and make it really thick and lush. Next, I'm gonna add in these beautiful mercury glass rose gold candlesticks. I walked into the store and I saw these and they just screamed, take me home. So I totally did. The big ones were $7.99 and the mediums were $6.99. They were from Beals. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the tall ones on the top, on the riser, and then I'm gonna put the medium ones on either side of the riser. I just love the warmth and glow that candles add to a dining table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these flicker flame battery operated candles to my centerpiece. I'm gonna put them on top of these mercury glass Voto candle holders. But instead of placing them inside the candle holder, I'm gonna flip this candle holder upside down so that I have some extra height. And then I'm going to place them in between my large rose gold glass candle holders. Now I've mentioned a few times that I have a beautiful magnolia tree in my yard. I've used the leaves in beautiful tall bases. I've used the white flowers in my centerpiece for an outdoor dining. And today I'm gonna to be using these seed pods. Now this is the time of year where they drop off the tree and they were all over my yard. So as I was picking them up, I thought I'm gonna use some of these. So I saved 12 of the best ones. And what I did was I put them in a bucket and I added some water to it, and then I also added about a cup of bleach. Now, the bleach is very important because the bleach not only cleans it, but if there's any bugs or any other little critters in there, it will get rid of those because the last thing you want is a little bug crawling out of your beautiful centerpiece during dinner. So what I did was I soaked it overnight, and then the next day I rinsed them off, I placed them outside and let them dry completely. And then I put them on a piece of paper and I got some gold spray paint. And I sprayed it a few coats of paint all over the seed pods. And then I came up with these beautiful natural elements. Look how pretty these are. I just love them. Now, if you don't have some seed pods in your yard from a magnolia tree, you could also use acorns or pine cones, whatever you have naturally around your area, those would work. So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm going to scatter them evenly throughout my centerpiece. Now 
To add in a little whimsy and some Thanksgiving spirit, I'm going to use these ceramic turkey place card holders. Instead of using them as a place card holder though, I'm going to put in some Thanksgiving quotes. Now I just found some quotes that I really liked and I printed them off, cut them out, and now I can just put them inside of my place card holder. I think it's so important to be thankful and grateful, especially this time of year. So it's nice to have some sweet reminders scattered throughout our tablescape so that your guests remember the reason that we're gathered together on this wonderful Thanksgiving day. The final step is just to add some copper bows. This is gonna bring in a vibrant pop of color and some added texture and sheen. And then I'm also going to fill up my mercury glass large candle holders with water. And then I'm gonna add in some floating candles and then I'm gonna light them up, turn my candles on and everything will be done. It's easy to create a gorgeous and inspiring Thanksgiving tablescape that will bring out the grateful spirit in each one of your guests. Mixing metallics with glass, fall foliage and candles will make your table exquisite. Thanksgiving is the time to be thankful and I'm so thankful my path has crossed with each one of you. Every single week my kids say, Mom, are you going to do food in your video this week? And when I tell them no, you can see that there's some disappointment in their eyes. So today I'm gonna to have some happy kiddos because I'm gonna be showing you how to make a spiced cupcake with some cinnamon cream cheese frosting. And I'm gonna also show you how to make a beautiful cupcake display for fall. I'm gonna make a spiced cupcake because that is perfect for this time of year. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna doctor this up a little bit. When I look for boxed cake mixes, I always try and make sure that the one I get the ones that have the pudding in the mix on it. And then I'm gonna add some extra ingredients. It calls for three eggs. I'm gonna add an extra one so there'll be four. I'm going to swap out the water for milk. I'm going to add an extra half of a cup of sour cream. If you don't have sour cream, you could add yogurt, plain yogurt or vanilla flavored yogurt. And then I'm also going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Now adding all of these extra ingredients to your boxed mix helps take a box mix from kind of dry to a lot moister and more tender of a cake. I'm gonna put some yellow and white cupcake liners in my muffin tins. They have so many cute cupcake liners out right now for this time of the year, and that's a fun way to theme a party or a holiday. I'm also gonna use this cupcake scoop to scoop my batter into my muffin tins. These are so nice to have because you can measure the amount of batter right there in the scoop. So each one of your cupcakes comes out the same size. It also has this little lever so the batter comes out cleanly and it won't get all over your muffin tin or your cupcake liner. Once my cupcakes have been completely cooled, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hollow out the center. So I've got this large icing tip and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna poke it into the center of my cupcake. I'm gonna give it a good twist and then I'm gonna pull it out and then I'm gonna take a knife and I'm just gonna cut around the edge and just pop out the center. And then I can fill my center with some jams or jellies. I can put some nuts in it or some pie filling. In this case, I'm gonna fill it up with M&Ms and some candy corn. Now that my cupcakes are filled with the M&Ms and candy corns, I'm gonna to put the tops back on. However, before I do that, I'm gonna trim off the excess cake that was pulled out of the center and then I'll just be left with the top that I can pop right back on and then our cupcake is ready for icing. Now it's time to make the cinnamon cream cheese icing. Doesn't that sound so good? And it's so easy to make. All you need to do is get a stick of butter or a half a cup and a 16 ounce package of cream cheese and that equals one cup. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in our bowl and we're gonna whip them together until they're nice and fluffy so for about two minutes. 
In my sifter, I have four cups of powdered sugar and I've added one tablespoon of cinnamon. I like to sift my dry ingredients together because I think it combines it really well and it also makes it a lot more light and fluffy. Once everything has been sifted, I'm going to slowly add it to my butter and cream cheese mixture and then I'm going to mix it all together until it's nice and light and fluffy. I'm gonna add my cream cheese icing to this Ziploc bag. Now what I'm gonna do is just trim off the corner of the bag and then I'm gonna slide in my large piping tip through the hole that I cut out. And then when I'm done with that, I can place it inside of my bowl and I can add the icing to it and then it will be ready to be piped onto my cupcakes. I'm just going to make a swirl of icing around each cupcake and then I'm going to top them with whatever is filled inside. So either candy corns or M&Ms and the plain ones are going to have little pumpkins on top. I coiled a heaping helping of cinnamon cream cheese icing around the top of each cupcake and then placed a few pieces of candy on top which matched the candy filled center. What a fun surprise it would be to bite into a delicious cupcake and find out that the middle was stuffed with fall themed candy. Now it's time to display our yummy cupcakes. Now I have a variety of ways that I'm gonna display them on my table. The first one is to use this shelf. Now I just had this shelf and I love displaying things on shelves because it's more eye level so you can get a different view of the cupcake than looking just straight down on it. I'm also gonna be using these cute little cupcake stands. Now these have a beautiful scalloped edge. I got them from TJ Maxx. And then I also have these round ones that I got from Target. So using cupcake stands is another way to add a lot of interest and height variation in your display. And then finally, I've got these little chalkboard signs that I'm going to be putting next to the cupcakes so you know what special surprise is inside. In the center of my display I have one large cake stand and then I'm going to surround it by more of these little mini ones and then I have this sign that says autumn leaves and cupcakes please which just is a fun whimsical way to remind your guests that they're having a fun autumn party with cupcakes. The last way we're gonna display our cupcakes are in these Dollar Tree plastic goblets. Now what I did was I just put some candy, the same candy that's inside our cupcake and on top, and that way when your guests have it, they have an easy way to hold their cupcake, and then they also have another sweet treat to nibble on. To add an extra touch of autumn flair, I am gonna bring in my wreath that I have made previously. And then I'm also gonna add in these cute little pumpkins. And I use these in my foyer decor. And if you remember, I got these at Target and they were only 20 cents. So I think I bought like 30 of them. So my house is exploding with pumpkins this season. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add them throughout my tablescape and it's gonna add a lot of extra autumn festivity. Now our display table is finished and ready for guests. This was such an easy thing to do because the cupcakes were semi-homemade and the display was really simple to put together. I just used things that I had around the house. If you have fall entertaining in your future, a fun way to wow your guests is with a cupcake display table. Feature your cupcakes in a variety of unique and creative ways by displaying them on a cake stand, on a shelf, or in a goblet full of fall candy. These cupcakes will fly off the shelf, so grab one before they disappear. We're gonna stick with that fall theme and we're gonna make some paper pumpkins two ways. We're gonna do some accordion pumpkins and then we're gonna do some circular pumpkins. They are so easy. You can do this craft with your kids or you can just do it for yourself and have some extra fall decor for your mantle, for a centerpiece. And the best part about this is that we're making it with paper, so it's very, very affordable. These little pumpkins are so adorable and easy to make. All you need to do is get some paper. I got some paper from Michaels. You can get it loose or you can buy a book of it. And then also I have some other things that you're gonna need. I've got some tape or some hot glue. I'm gonna use hot glue, but you can use tape. I've got some scissors, 
a ruler, some stems for the pumpkin, a pencil to trace things out, and then some raffia for the vine that hangs off of the pumpkin. We're gonna start off making this cute little accordion pumpkin. Now what you'll need is some paper. Uh, you'll need two 12 by 12 inch pieces of paper. In fact, you'll only need one and a half, so three pieces of paper would make two pumpkins. And what you're gonna wanna do is cut out some 12 by two inch strips of paper. You'll need eight of them to make this pumpkin. So I'm gonna get my ruler. I'm going to measure out some strips on my paper, and then I'm going to cut them out. And what I will end up with are some little strips of paper that I'm going to fold into the accordion shape. Now I've got my eight strips of paper. I've already started folding two of them. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is just fold it back and forth to make an accordion shape. Now what I did was I folded it to approximately about an inch on my folds as I go down my sheet of paper. And then once I'm done making all of my folds, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue them together. Now the top and the bottom are going to get two strips of paper that I'm going to glue together to make one large strip. And then the center one is going to get four because it's going to be a wider strip. Now I'm gonna use hot glue to glue them together and I'm actually going to fold it on top of each other. I'm going to put it like right on top so it sits on top of it so it's a seamless transition from one piece of the accordion to the next. Now that my strips are to the size that I want, I'm going to glue the ends together to form a circle. Once the circle is made, I'm going to fold the edges into the center to form a medallion like this. And then I'm gonna put a dab of hot glue in the center and let it dry. Now I'm gonna do this for the bottom and the middle medallion, but for the top one I'm gonna wait for a minute because I'm gonna stick the stem in it, so that's gonna be a little bit different. But for right now, we're gonna do two, one for the bottom and one for the middle. Now it's time for the top of our pumpkin. The only difference between this and the other layers is that this gets a stem. So I'm going to fold the edges in to make the medallion, and when I do that, I'm gonna stick this stem right in the center. I'm gonna put a line of hot glue around it, and then I'm going to hot glue the edges to the stem so that the stem will stay in place. Now that all of the medallions are made, it's time to assemble our pumpkin. We'll start off with the base of this little one right here, and in the center, I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue, and I'm gonna place the center piece on top, the center medallion, and then on top of our center medallion, I'll add a little bit more glue, and then I'll place the top with the stem right on top of that, and then we're also gonna add some leaves. I'm just gonna cut out some leaves out of paper, and I'm gonna hot glue those to the stem, and then I'm also gonna add some raffia, and that's gonna act as our vine. And here's our finished accordion pumpkins quick, easy, and affordable. If you can believe it, our next pumpkin is even easier than the first. What you're gonna need is, again, two pieces of 12 by 12 inch paper. I went with two different styles. I have a plain orange, and then I have this festive fall leaf paper. You're also gonna need some hot glue or tape, some scissors, a stem, some cute little leaves, raffia, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a Tupperware bowl because this will give me an even circle to trace out. I'm simply gonna fold my piece of paper into fourths. Once it's done, I'm gonna get my form, which is my Tupperware. I'm gonna set it in the center of my square and I'm going to trace it out and I'm gonna get a circle. And then I'm gonna cut those circles out and it will give me four even circles per paper. Now I'm just gonna simply fold my circles in half. When I do it, I want to make sure that the printed side with the color that we want is on the inside of the circle. So the white will be on the outside because when I open it up, this is gonna be what's on the outside of the pumpkin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold them all in half and then I'm going to glue four of them together. So I will have two pieces of four circles glued together. Now the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I want to put 
my pumpkin stem in the middle. So if I do two pieces of four, it's really easy for me to put the stem in the middle and then I can glue everything together. The final step is just to add these leaves and some raffia. And now our second pumpkins are done. They are so cute and again, so easy and basically free. And what more could you ask for out of a little bit of fall decor? Now these pumpkins are finished. They were so quick and easy to do and you can use them in so many different ways. You could make some for Halloween or Thanksgiving. You could use a variety of different kinds of paper and theme them. You could make different sizes or shapes. Also, you can style them in a variety of different ways. I'm gonna put them on a tiered tray right now, but you could also add them to a mantle or fireplace. Dress up your fall decor with a few fun and whimsical paper pumpkins. These pumpkin decorations will be a perfect addition to your fall, Halloween, or Thanksgiving decor. Today we're gonna to be sticking with that cozy autumn feeling, and what better way is there to warm up your friends and family than with a fall beverage station? Now I'm gonna be making some pumpkin white chocolate hot cocoa, as well as some orange candy melt marshmallows, some cookies, and more. So I hope that you're excited. Let's get started. Now I like incorporating elements into my design that I already have. That way it saves me a lot of money. For instance, I'm going to use this cozy knitted blanket in place of a tablecloth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it on top of my island and then I'm going to tie the corners on each of my sides with a fall organza ribbon. Now, not only will this ribbon bring in another touch of fall, but we will help it from sliding off my island and it will keep the blanket in place. Now, I love using signs in my designs. I think it's the easiest and most impactful way to make a statement or to theme a design. And today I'm gonna do Spice Spice Baby because we're doing all things pumpkin spice. Now this is so easy to make, I just made it on my computer, I printed it out, and then my sign has a metallic front. So I just got a magnet and I put the magnet onto the paper and it stuck right to my sign. And now I have a perfect sign to theme my design. I got these square glass box candle holders at Target. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open it up and inside I'm gonna place these orange glass votive candle holders. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to place them upright and I'm going to stick them inside of my box and once they're inside my box I'm going to put the lid back on but this time instead of having the candle holder part be upright I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to place it on top. That way I can put other things on top and make this more of a display item. On top of my glass boxes I have these mini glass milk bottles with a gold bottom. They are so cute and they are gonna be a perfect way to display my festive marshmallows. Inside of my little milk jugs, I'm gonna put in some marshmallows on a stick because you have to have marshmallows with hot cocoa, right? Now, all you need to make these are 12 large marshmallows, some orange coating chocolates, a variety of festive fall sprinkles, and 12 wooden skewers. I poked my wooden skewer into the center of each of my large marshmallows. Then I dipped the marshmallow three-fourths of the way into the melted orange colored coating chocolate. I tapped the skewer against the glass to remove any excess coating chocolate and then dipped my marshmallow into the festive fall sprinkles. I placed my finished marshmallow into some styrofoam so they could dry upright. These fall themed marshmallows are such an easy way to add some extra pizzazz to your hot cocoa bar. Once my marshmallows are completely cool, I'm gonna add them to my milk jugs. And I love using these because they bring in such a vibrant pop of color of fall. And then also to go along with our marshmallows, I found these pumpkin spice marshmallows at Walmart. And it's a fun alternative to a regular marshmallow.
Now I like having something to munch on when I'm sipping my hot cocoa, whether it's a muffin or a donut. In this case, my kiddos really wanted these soft sugar cookies. And so with the bright orange icing and the coordinating sprinkles, I thought it would be a perfect addition to our cocoa station. I got a set of eight of these cute little cups at Home Goods. I loved the design on them and they were only $3.99 and they come with lids and they also come with some sleeves that say pumpkin spice and everything nice. Now cups like these are a great alternative to mugs and they will also keep your hot cocoa nice and warm. I found these spice stirring sticks at Target and they're gonna be perfect for my little table. I'm gonna set it inside of these little glasses over here. And then the finishing touch are these little pumpkin patch napkins. Now these were also from Home Goods and they were $2.99 and they're gonna fit in nicely with my theme. Now that our beverage station is all set up, it's time to add our drink. Now I have made a pumpkin white chocolate hot cocoa. This has been a family favorite of ours for years. I actually made a video last year with this recipe in it along with some pumpkin bread. It is so delicious. Now this is so easy to make. You literally just have to put all of your ingredients in a crock pot, turn it on low and cook for three hours and just stir occasionally. I also like serving my beverages in a crock pot because it's really easy access for all of your guests to get their drink and you don't have to worry about a hot stove. Well, here's our finished look. Our beverage station is complete. This would be such a fun way to usher in your guests to a party. It would also be a great idea for a late night snack. When fall rolls around, I immediately think about a warm fall beverage. So grab an autumn inspired cup, a festive marshmallow, and a delicious cookie to pair with this creamy pumpkin white chocolate hot cocoa. Have fun with your beverage station. From stirring sticks to themed napkins, and of course you can't forget the pumpkin spice spice baby. We're gonna jump right in and start decorating our homes for fall. I'm gonna show you how to make a beautiful handmade wreath that was very easy to make and very inexpensive since I got most of the items at the Dollar Tree, so let's get started. This wreath is a 24 inch wreath and after my coupon, it was only $5 and I got it at Michael's. There are so many different kinds of forms you can use. You can use metal forms or foam forms or you can use an embroidery hoop. There's lots of options. They have great things at the Dollar Tree so you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a foundation for your wreath. You can create a beautiful fall wreath for little cost. Everything on this tray was from the Dollar Tree. By mixing in affordable items with a few more expensive items, you'll get a high-end look at a reasonable price. Having a wreath holder is a bonus when you're making a wreath because you can hang it on there upright and that way you can make sure that you place all of your items on your wreath evenly. This is also great to have if you're gonna put your wreath on a tabletop for tabletop decor. I've also used this wreath holder outside for my porch decor, I hung my seahorse on it. So having one of these is awesome. I got it at Michael's and after my coupon, it was only $4. I'm going to be designing the florals on my wreath in a C section. So it's going to kind of go all around like this in a crescent shape. Think of it as dividing it up into four sections. I'm going to have my sign over here and then I'm going to have my pumpkins and florals on each one of these sides right here. I'm going to start off by putting my ribbons on first because that will be the trickiest part to do and I want to make sure that those are on really tight and then I can stick in my florals and my pumpkins in between. To create our ribbons, we're still going to use the same tactic of looping, twisting, and looping again, and then tying it together with this wire that again is from the Dollar Tree. This is what we're going to do. They end up looking like this. So instead of a bunched up ribbon or bow like this, they're going to be a little bit looser. That way I can wrap them around the perimeter of my wreath. And that way there'll be some spaces in between that I can add my pumpkins and all the rest of my florals. Gather the ribbon together to create a billowy loop. Pinch the ends of the loop together and then add a piece of floral wire around the base of the loop. Then twist the wire together to secure. Make sure that when you tie the wire around your ribbon that you're leaving at least about an inch on each side of excess wire. That way you have a good amount to wrap around the wreath so that you can secure it to the wreath. 
I evenly spaced out my various ribbons around three sides of my wreath. I made sure each section had all four different varieties and colors of my ribbons. Once my ribbons were securely wired to the wreath, I fluffed up the loops so the bows were round and full. Now that my ribbons are on my wreath, it's time to place our large items like our pumpkins. And then I also have these cute little acorns that I got at Michael's. I'm gonna place those around the wreath and once they're on, then I can go back through and I can place in my feathers and my leaves and any other florals that I might think fits in there. I'm using these velvet turquoise pumpkins that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now turquoise isn't your traditional fall color and I think that's why I was so drawn to it because I really wanted to branch out and do something unique and different. To reinforce this color theme, I'm going to use some peacock feathers because this also has turquoise in it. By taking some non-traditional items and adding them to traditional fall colors and themes, you can really refresh and update and get a unique piece of decor. To make sure that my pumpkin stays securely on my wreath, I'm adding some wooden skewers. All I did was I took a regular wooden skewer, I added some hot glue to the end of it, and then I poked it into the center of my pumpkin. Now, once you're done with your pumpkin, put it into your wreath, pull it through, and then with a pair of wire cutters, you can snip off the excess wood that's hanging out the back. There really is no rhyme or reason with the way that I put my florals on my wreath. What I do is I just wanna make sure that I have one of my pumpkins and some of my florals and each of the same ribbons in each one of my sections. That way when the wreath comes together, it looks cohesive and even. I filled in vacant spaces and gaps between my pumpkins with color coordinated leaves, with my acorn picks, and with long stems of harvest themed leaves with mini pumpkins, which reinforce my fall theme. Then the finishing touch is to add the elegant peacock feathers. The skewer method is a great solution when you have flowers that have stems that are too short, or if you have an oddly shaped item. I'm gonna use these skewers on my sign, this friends gather here sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. Again, I'm just gonna put my skewers on the back. I'm gonna hot glue it, and then I'll secure it to my wreath and it will stay in place. I added a line of hot glue along the top two inches of my wooden skewer and then pressed it firmly onto my sign. I only needed two skewers because only two sides of my sign were going to be attached to the wreath. Once the glue was dried, I poked the skewers into the bottom and sides of my wreath and then shimmied the sign into place until it was secure. Then I snipped off the excess wooden pieces. Now our autumn wreath is complete. I've ended up with this amazing custom piece of fall decor that was so much easier to create than it looks. By using inexpensive Dollar Tree items, it came in at an affordable price too.